All right, let's see here. In this problem, let's say we're given, let's say, let's say the mass of A is five kilograms. The mass of B is 10 kilograms. The velocity of A, 10 meters per second. And it's gonna, it's gonna collide with the particle B and it's attached to a spring. And we wanna find how far the spring is compressed. So let's say that the particles are gonna stick after collision which means that their coefficient of restitution is if two particles get stuck together, it's a completely inelastic impact and the coefficient of restitution would be zero. Yes, excellent, excellent. And here's what the schematic looks like. And the velocity of A just before impact is 10 meters per second. B is initially, it's all re at rest. We'll say the ground here is frictionless. So we have a smooth, and the spring is initially uncompressed, is unstretched. It has a stiffness, maybe nine kilonewtons per meter. All right, all right, all right. So we gotta do the collision problem first. So what we wanna find first is when the particles collide, what is that velocity right after impact. So here, I like to make two schematics. I wanna draw a schematic before impact. So I'll call this my before impact drawing. And then I have my drawing, the exact same drawing after impact. And let's see, what's the velocity of A before impact? I'll call that VA1. What's the velocity of A before impact? A before impact is 10 meters. meters. Okay, so that's part of the given information. What's the velocity of B before impact? B before Zero. Zero, all right, all right. And we have a velocity of A after impact and a velocity of B after impact. You know, like in a regular problem, we might think there might be a rebound for A or um, maybe, you know, it might go in the opposite direction. But all I'm going to do is I'm going to draw it to the right because this direction to the right, I'm assuming is positive. Let's say the next thing we're going to do is apply the conservation of momentum in the line of impact. So we have we have two particles MAVA plus MBVB is equal to MAVA2 plus MBVB2. See we know the mass of A, we know VA1, we know the mass of B, we know VB1 is zero, we know the mass of A, we don't know VA2, we know the mass of B, we don't know VB2. So we have one equation, two unknowns, we need another relationship. The other relationship will come from restitution. So now we're gonna apply the coefficient of restitution. And you know, I have my fun way of memorizing this equation. Bab. Bab. So VB, relative velocities after impact divided by the relative velocities before impact. So VB2 minus VA2 divided by VA1 minus VB1. And this equals zero in this case. So that means everything in the denominator just goes bye-bye because I just multiplied through. And this equation just tells me that VB2 equals, VA2. equals VA2. And you pl plug that into the conservation of momentum because the two oh, particles are stuck okay. together. And so now we solve. And, and, the, and this time now the masses are stuck together. It's a 15 kilogram block and it's moving to the right. All right, so now we have to find how much the spring is compressed. And here's where we could use conservation of energy because we have a smooth surface. Basically what I have, I'll, I'll kind of, I'll redraw this. So six, apply the conservation of energy to determine spring compression. And what I have is I have a big old block, call it A and B together. A and B and it weighs 15 kilograms and it's moving at a speed of 10 thirds meters per second and it hits the spring here and at some point this spring is going to compress it's going to compress and then we're going to have we want to find out how much the spring gets compressed so right now if you will the stretch in the spring is zero in this state and then later in this state right here and then later on it gets compressed so here I will say call it s1 equals zero and then later on this green line represents s equals zero or s1 equal to zero and this line was right here this was s1 equal to zero and now i want to know what is s2 
two. Like how far in did it go? So what would the velocity be here? It would be zero, yeah, because the spring is fully compressed and then it's changing direction. So we know the velocity is zero. So I'm going to call this velocity in the initial phase, I'll call this one, and I'll call this V1 equal to 10 thirds meters per second. V2 here is equal to zero because the spring is fully compressed and it's changing direction. And what we're trying to find is what is S2? And so now we're going to apply the conservation of energy. And the conservation of energy is the kinetic energy at one plus the potential potential energy at one is equal to the kinetic energy at two plus the potential energy at two. Gee, I have kinetic energy at one. So T1 is equal to one half M. I'll just say M is equal to, in this case, M is 15 kilograms. And then I have V1 squared. Do I have any potential energy here at the first stage? No. no, I have no because my string my spring is unstretched. I'm staying on the same horizontal plane So there's no gravitational potential energy and the spring is unstretched So I have no so I would I would write one half K s1 squared but this equals zero because the spring is unstretched Then I have t2 here and what's my kinetic energy at 2? And what do we know about the velocity? Zero, so the kinetic energy is also zero, great. Here, V2, what's my potential energy? One half K S2 squared, right? And S2 is what I'm trying to solve for. Does it matter if S2 is being compressed or stretched? No, because it's being, it's squared, right? So in terms of the calculation, it doesn't matter, but we do know that it's being compressed. And so now I, I'm just gonna suck, plug and chug into my conservation of energy relationships. One half M V1 squared plus zero is equal to zero plus one half K S2 squared. Let's see the one halves cancel the mass 15 kilograms times 10 thirds meters per second squared is equal to K. What did we say K was nine? Nine kilonewtons per meter times S2 squared. So this is what's 10 thirds is like one, 100 ninths. So 100 times 15, 15 1500 1500 over 9 kilogram meter per second squared times meter equals 9 thousand newtons per meter s2 squared so all i did was convert i separated so that this right here kilogram meter per second squared is called a one kilogram meter per second squared meter per second squared equals one newton, newton. and one thousand newtons equals one kilonewton so now i do my math here what is is point oh got it Point zero one eight five meters squared and then I take the square root of that and I get point one three six meters and then what would that be in millimeters times one thousand one hundred and thirty six millimeters those of you in America or are you choosing FPS it's about 25 millimeters per inch so that's about five six eight five and a half inches you're welcome all right i hope that was useful let me know if you have any questions in the comments below take it easy structure free